All right, welcome back. You just heard out the management of VEL talk about the Q3 numbers. Now let's talk about the numbers of Jindal Stainless Hussar. Um, it was a bit of a weak set. You know, we did see profits dip on account of the significant compression in margins. And of course, it was accompanied by a decline in the top line. So let's understand then from the management as to what went by in the third quarter. Vijay Sharma, the senior vice president of the company, joins us now. Mr. Sharma, thanks so much for joining in on ET now. And let's talk about, you know, your numbers and more specifically first up about your top line. It's been a volume decline to the extent of 16 odd percent. Now you've mentioned that there has been lower demand from some of the segments like auto, from consumer goods. So um, what is the contribution you get from such segments and what's the extent, extent of decline you witnessed there? I will start with the Indian perspective. You see in India the stainless steel is growing by about 9 to 10 percent on the annual basis since last couple of years. In Q3, this demand got shrunk by more than 6%, but we, our uh, sales pattern, uh, overall it got shrunk by 5%. But if we talk about the auto, consumer durables and things like that, even the railways also, though a uh, railway is uh, growing very fast, but this quarter there were certain uh, wagon related requirements which got delayed, now which are coming from February onwards. So let me tell you that our stake in each segment is not more than 10%, but if the automobile degrows, then even the 3-4-5% in any particular segment, that also makes a big impact. So overall, if I see Q3 upon Q2, our volume degrowth was 9%, but yes, Q3 upon Q3, the volume degrowth was about 16%. But I think this is a very, very temporary and cyclic. And from Q4 January onwards, the things are looking very, very bright. Okay, um, let's talk about value-added products. You know, you have a lot of focus over there and it's done well. Volume growth of 19%. Uh, what's the outlook there? Can that continue? And what's the contribution currently from these high-margin products? You see, uh, you see, in the volume in the volume terms, uh, the uh, it uh, will not be very high. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, from the contribution portion, uh, it's uh, quite high. So uh, volume we have already told you and it is also a part in the uh, uh, in the uh, this thing we have given you. 19% uh, was uh, because of uh, this uh, precision chips, blade steels and coin blanks. That was the volume. All right. Um, you know, aerospace and defense, these are the two areas you've been focusing on very significantly. And you've recently won orders as well from Mizro. Uh, any more such orders on the anvil? What can we expect there? Uh, you see, uh, practically in India, uh, my company is into all the areas where the stainless steel goes into. Uh, like I told you about ABC, ART, process industry, hollowware, kitchenware and these super niche markets like aerospace and uh, defense. We have got a collaboration with government of India wherein uh, many of the uh, uh, strategic uh, components uh, which are being used in defense area which used to be uh, from the imported material we are partner we are developing with them and we are converting it uh, them into uh, the indian made stainless steel so there are certain uh, strategic components which we are partnering with the government of india okay your margins have compressed once again um, you know nickel prices by the way have seen a dip on a q or q basis so um, how does this essentially affect your margins you've seen inventory losses so if you could explain to our viewers how the fall in nickel and how inventory losses work and impact your margins you see uh, uh, in uh, q3 the nickel average got dropped by 13 percent and uh, in q2 it got dropped by nine percent over the previous quarter so it uh, it actually has the adverse effect on the overall sentiments and uh, apart from the nickel it is one part there are all other uncertainties also which are happening globally also and also the retail financing challenge which was sort of a temporary because the uh, the lenders did not have the confidence in this mechanism so overall it had an adverse effect but despite of that our abita uh, from q2 from 10.3 percent it was down to nine percent Yes, we could have done better, and but in uh, next quarters, we feel that uh, things are going to be much, much better. So, what's the outlook on margins going forward, especially if we continue to see nickel on this uh, declining trajectory? What can we expect from your margins? Okay, uh, uh, no, you see, uh, we are making a lot of internal, uh, uh, some improvements in various categories. For example, we are now diversifying into certain areas which has got less impact of the volatility of the nickel. Like I told you about automobile, I told you about uh, railways, these uh, uh, segments, they need uh, material which is practically nickel free. So we are uh, reorganizing the portfolio so that our dependence and on one particular commodity relatively reduces.
Okay, all right. Uh, thanks so much then, Mr. Sharma, for uh, joining in and helping us understand what exactly went by for the company in the third quarter. It had been a tough quarter, but the management himself said that they could have done much better. Um, of course, they've been winning new orders from niche areas. So let's see how that holds up for Jindal Stainless. Okay, I think. Um,